This is a demonstration of total elbow arthroplasty using the Brian Mori triceps reflecting approach. A posterior incision is made approximately 15 centimeters in length, centered just lateral to the olecranon. The subcutaneous tissue is incised down to the level of the triceps fascia. A full thickness flap is raised medially to expose the ulnar nerve. A Gelpi retractor is placed medial to the triceps muscle to locate the ulnar nerve posterior to the intermuscular septum. The ulnar nerve is dissected proximally to the arcade of struthers and distally to the first motor branch to the FCU. A vessel loop is placed around the ulnar nerve to aid with decompression. After identification of the junction of the triceps and intermuscular septum, it is incised. This incision is carried distally, incising the medial forearm fascia and capsule to expose the joint. Next, the triceps, forearm fascia, and periosteum are elevated off the olecranon from medial to lateral as one unit. The forearm fascia incision should extend 6 cm distal to the olecranon. It can be helpful to extend the elbow to 20 or 30 degrees to relieve tension on the tenuous tissue as the flap is raised. Once this flap has been raised, you should have complete visualization of the olecranon and proximal ulna. The remnants of the triceps insertion and posterior capsule are then elevated off the distal humerus. Excision of distal tip of olecranon is then performed to better visualize the trochlea. An oscillating saw is used to remove the central portion of the trochlea. A high-speed burr is used to gain access to the medullary canal of the humerus. The humeral alignment guide is then inserted with the aid of a T-handle. It can be malleted into place. The humeral cutting guide is then attached to the intramedullary alignment guide. The cuts are defined using an oscillating saw. The alignment guide and humeral cutting guide are then removed. The cuts are then completed with the use of an oscillating saw. This bone should be retained for use as bone grafting of the anterior flange. The humeral rasps are then used to open the canal to the correct diameter for the selected humeral component. The humeral trial component is then inserted. Next we begin ulnar preparation. The intramedullary canal is opened with the use of a high speed burr. A flexible reamer is used to further open the canal. Then sequential ulnar rasps are used to the correct size. The ulnar trial component is then inserted. Reduction of the joint is then performed, the components are aligned, and the pin is inserted. The elbow is taken through a range of motion to assess if there are any areas of impingement. Intraoperative fluoroscopy can be performed to ensure adequate sizing and positioning of components. Our technique for cementing is to use a small cement gun, cement restrictors, and runny cement to pressurize the canal. The triceps tendon repair back to the olecranon is then performed. This is done with the use of two transosseous drill holes placed in a cruciate configuration. The first drill hole is drilled from the medial aspect to the lateral aspect of the olecranon, and a Keith needle is used to pass the suture. The suture is then passed through the tendinous portion of the triceps in a cruciate formation. The second tunnel is drilled and a Keith needle is used to pass the suture. The suture is then tied over the olecranon. A second transverse drill hole is made, and a suture is passed in a similar fashion. This is also tied over the olecranon. 
The forearm fascia is sutured to the periosteum up to the margin of the FCU. We protect the repair for six weeks and avoid active elbow extension against resistance.